Welcome to Where They Wonder. We are Kat and Kev, and we travel full time around the United States in our Grand Design Imagine. Where are we going, Kat? We are on our way to the tunnels that lead to the Boulder Dam. Off we go. Bye. And there goes Kat. We are staying at Boulder Beach Campground, which is right on the edge of Lake Mead. This is where the trail officially begins. We've come about a mile, mile and a half from the camp, all on a paved road, as you could probably see from the couple of videos Kev took. So now we're going to do this, which is the historic railroad trail. And we're going to go through tunnels and it's going to be cool. We are using our electric bikes, which we've had a couple of years now. And if you want to see our review on this and get a bit more information on them, I will put the QR code and the link up above and in the description below. We love them. It's the old railroad bed, it's cool. This network of railroads ran into two different areas. It ran down into where the lake is today, near Hemingway Wash, where they got the aggregate to mix with the Portland cement for the upper concrete station. Two thirds of the dam was from the lower uh, station. And then the top third was from the station that's up here. The journey took about two hours round trip. And those trains ran 24 hours a day. The colors along this path are incredible. We're literally on this raised section. I mean, it's quite the drop over there, see, look. And she says, cycling with one hand. This board is talking about the Ring of Mountains. This is Lake Mead in 1985. That little black island you see there is that. Look, guys, tunnel one. They're 35 feet tall to accommodate the uh, large pieces of equipment for the generating station. Debilitating, 100 degree heat, hard volcanic rock, pounding jackhammers, falling rocks, swirling clouds of dust and sand. Yet, despite conditions, crews from the Lewis Construction Company worked round the clock in three shifts and completed the project for the federal government in five months in 1931. This trip is almost like that one we took over there in the Carrizo Gorge to see that huge curved trestle. Oh, the wooden the trestle. Yes, yeah. yes. Oh, that was, okay. The Goat Canyon trestle, it's called. That was amazing and terrifying. It is the longest curved wooden trestle in the world. It's no longer used. I'll put a link to that hike up. You can see me have a complete not panic only, attack. Not only that, but the Carrizo Gorge is a beautiful area. It's, oh, it's, it's gorgeous. It's like a huge canyon and all these beautiful colors. Yeah, but we like didn't here. do that on bikes. We hiked that, but I'll put a link up. That's one of our, that is one of our most popular videos because it is crazy. They've tried to shore it up above there, yeah. but... Uh, that one looks insane. If you would have stood here and looked out at this little uh, valley right here in the 1930s, it would have been scattered with tents and wooden huts. Uh, and it was really horrible place. I mean, they built this in 100 degrees heat. And of course, this water wasn't here because they hadn't built the dam yet. was the longest tunnel. I didn't record sadly because um, it's really hard to record and ride these bikes but this tunnel's curved it's really cool and now we are at the section where the uh, where the dam is or no where the power plant is. We've come to the section of the trail where bicycles are not allowed so thankfully we can hike. <laughs> so we're gonna take this section right here now and hike down to the dam and go to the visitor center from here. This is the lowering winch right here you know, when they need the equipment that to go down to the base of the of the dam and uh, they still use that today and it goes all the way over to this little tiny hole over here. I just want to celebrate you. This massive arch gravity structure contains 3,250,000 cubic yards of concrete. That's enough concrete to build a two-lane highway from San Francisco to New York City. The thickness of the roadway is a mere 45 feet, but as the dam expands towards the base, it reaches 660 feet, nearly as thick as it is tall. I feel these pages turning. Yesterday is burning. Now's the time for learning. The future.
This bronze sculpture, it was designed by the artist Laurie Slenning, and it was to represent the blades of the turbine, and it depicts the all the aspects of the dam. It's kind of cool, isn't it? Oh, this is the overhead cableway section. It's three and a half inches in diameter, but it's made of seven smaller rope cables, and the one in the center is made of seven small ones as well. And then this right here is a level that they use to measure elevation change between two or three points. The Hoover Dam is 726 feet tall, 1,244 feet in length. It's 45 feet thick at the top, 660 feet thick at the base. It's not only a national historic landmark, it's one of the seven wonders of the modern world. The dam was actually built literally using blocks of concrete. And it was said that it would take over 100 years for the concrete to cool, but they actually installed steel pipe throughout the concrete and they pumped cold water through, which allowed the concrete to cool and allowed them to continue building. Sixteen thousand men worked on the Hoover Dam, with over five thousand men employed at the peak of construction. Catherine's going to make electricity by turning this magnet. It's causing the coils to do what? Yeah. I've never understood electricity. <laughs> it's a magical power. It says magnetism, not magic. But I'm sorry, it's just magic. Still here. none the wiser. What? Help me tighten this bolt. <laughs> it's too heavy. You can't even. Bit, bit big for you. <laughs> We're headed to the tour of the power plant. It houses 17 giant turbine generators depicted right here, and they are massive. All right, so we're on the tour. We came down six miles an hour in a very large elevator with a lot of people, and now we're actually in the canyon walls, which is kind of cool. We're in the dam. What do you think, Kat? It's awesome. We're inside an inspection tunnel. We're gonna find some cracks over here. See, he's looking at a crack down there. I'm looking for crack. What? That's a, that, that's it? That's it. Wow. I think you should be thankful that that's it. We're right here. We're inside what's called a diversion tunnel. So these two outermost tunnels they use these two tunnels to create what's called spillways. So we don't really want to use the spillways. In fact, we've only used them twice. The first time was 1941. That was a test. The second time, 1983, is not a test. That's caused by very heavy spring runoff or snow melt upstream that causes that lake to get seven feet from the top of the dam. It gets too full. Well, you guys are in one of the harshest places on the planet right now, the Mojave Desert. We need good, safe, and reliable sources of water. And the Colorado historically was neither safe nor reliable. So that's our job. Flood control and irrigation. Too much water and not enough water. These pipes are 13 feet in diameter and the little red dots, that represents the turbines. So there's two different tours going on. We have the tour that does include going actually into the dam. Some of these tours just include that that we've just seen and then also the power plant. So we're gonna split up in a minute, but right now we're going through these tunnels and it's crazy. focusing on Nevada One, the first generator, you'll be able to see a spinning steel shaft right there in the center. That shaft goes down 65 feet below where it connects to that turbine, and it's the spinning of that turbine by that water that's maintaining the speed on that shaft. And then that shaft drives the rotor, which actually creates that power, and that's happening right here in front of us. But one rare opportunity that you guys have today is to see well, a part of a rotor outside of a generator. A lot of people don't get to see that when they come on tours here today. This tunnel is 300 feet long and we are walking into the dam itself. They literally constructed the dam knowing that it was going to become a tourist attraction. And so they built it as such. That's why it's all Art Deco inside. That's why it's so beautiful inside yes, and accessible. Now we are going to the vent that you can see on the dam. Alright, 
Okay, here we are. We're in the shield, as it's called. I'm gonna put my camera through. Here I go. This is where one block begins, another block ends. So how they formed this tunnel? Well, they had the wood forms already in place, and then they poured the concrete over the wood forms. They were getting, then when they got done with the wooden forms, they took the wood forms out, but they left the imprint of the wooden forms. And that's what you see here is the imprint of the wooden forms yeah. that they used. Looks like planks, doesn't it? They're even uh, identified with letters, see? Mm -hmm. But if it starts to leak, we'll just put a finger here, it'll be fine. Luckily, they have an earthquake okay. sensor right here. Okay. Don't, don't get to the inbox. going to what's called the stairway to heaven. This is an emergency exit apparently. Oh my goodness me. That is a lot of stairs. There are 717 stairs in that entire staircase. 317 going up, 400 going down. They go down to the power plant level. There is a 55 degree angle going up and they have never been used in emergency and now they're used for inspections. Because not, the elevators don't take you to every part of the dam. Look at that! We came out on the top of the dam! So Nevada is over there and we are going to walk to Arizona. The trip we took was $30 each and uh, if you take the $15 trip you don't get to go to that vent, you don't get to go up to the top of the bridge. You basically just go down, see the turbines and go back up. And the first tours that they held when the dam was completed in 1938 was 25 cents each. Can you As of with every single event and every single famous place we go, it's under construction. They're doing a Monument Plaza restoration. But we were here not that long ago, a couple of years ago, and we have photographs of these, so I'll put that up. Hoover Dam's construction crew's mascot was found as a puppy by workers at the construction camp. This dog traveled to and from the dam site with them and spent his days visiting the many work areas. On February 21st, 1941, the life of this devoted animal came to an end when a truck under which he was sleeping rolled over him. The official number of fatalities from building the Hoover Dam was 96. These poor men died from various causes such as drowning, heavy equipment accidents or falling. The most dangerous job was the high scalers. These guys hung up the side of the canyon walls carrying 40 pound jackhammers. And of course, safety wasn't quite what it is today. The amount of engineering in just this one picture is absolutely breathtaking. That was fantastic. We had a really great time. It was a and great dam tour. It was a great dam tour. Now we have to go up what Kevin coined the seven deadly switchbacks. They're not quite as bad as when we were in Bryce, but uh, they're pretty steep. So we walked three miles. We walked three miles today. And 19 floors. Gosh. But I was just doing the tour. Yeah. Where do they count me riding? As well? I was going to say, I don't know whether we walked 19 floors on that tour. A lot of that was elevators. <laughs> Thankfully, the bikes are still here. We hope you've enjoyed our tour of the historic railroad trail and the Hoover Dam. Join us next week as we tour the historic mining town of Oatman, Arizona. Until then, we'll see you on the trail.